Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it has been forever. Um, that is because I unfortunately was overdoing myself at work. I pinched my sciatic nerve, sprained my lower back, and I found out I have degenerative disc disease and my discs are tearing um, instead of bulging. So I have a lot of back issues going on. I was laid up for quite some time because I let the injury go on for too long and I kept working, which was stupid on my part. I thought maybe I just twinged my back, but it got to the point where I was crying in tears and couldn't even walk. Um, so that is one of the reasons I haven't been posting. I was in a tremendous amount of pain um, and I was laid up. Also, I had another health scare, but don't worry, everything is fine. Uh, and I was being overworked at work and uh, some crazy stuff went on. Long story short, I had a, st a stalker at work and uh, my manager didn't want to do anything about it. So I've decided to put my degree to good use and I am going to take the leap for my career um, instead of you know, doing managerial, there's nothing wrong with it. But instead of, I'm sick of being a manager, I'm sick of all that. So I have recently left my position and I'll have more time for videos. So since the last time you saw me, I have had on July 9th, which you're going to see today in this video, it's kind of long, might be kind of boring, but bear with me, it shows you the process of a digital try-in. It's not like it's, so my cat jumped up here, so if you hear her, I'm sorry. Come here. Um, it's not like a wax try-in. It's similar. It's the same sort of thing to see what you like and don't like and make sure things fit properly. But with a digital, a digital try-in, it's made out of a different material. I believe Dr. Frank will go over what that material is called because off the top of my head, I cannot think of it. But with this material... Um, there is, it's extremely bright white. It's not the shade that your teeth are going to be. And they have to put a pink resin where the gum line is supposed to be to create uh, contrast and to differentiate between the teeth and the gums. So they look a little funny, but it gives you an idea of what they're going to look like. And basically, um, well, we'll get into more of that. But since you have seen me on July 9th, 2019, I went for a try-in. Um, they made some adjustments and I recently went back yesterday, so August 20th, 2019, and uh, had my next try-in. So I'm not gonna get too much into that because that's another video. I'm trying to talk fast so this video won't be extremely long. Um, but I'm also going to have a video that is um, explaining how the denture, pro the original denture process goes and how those dentures are made, sort of a high be uh, bleh, behind the scenes look at how those dentures are made. Uh, I will forewarn you, I am going to be making these videos back to back. So you're going to see me in the same outfit because I'm making them hopefully all today. I may not upload them all today but I'm going to try to make them all today because today I have nothing to do besides sit and look at the beautiful rain that's falling. So without further ado, in this video, you are going to see my first digital denture try-in and um, Dr. Frank will be explaining things. He does another, uh, another mold type thing, like another wax, sort of like a wax, not a wax trying, um, just another mold of, he takes my dentures, my original existing dentures, makes a mold of them and scans them into the computer to create a denture that takes what I like from my original denture, the denture he is making and combines them to hopefully make the perfect denture for me. So without further ado, here is my video. I'm happy to be back. I am sorry I haven't been responding, but life has been crazy as we all know that happens. And I am here and uh, all right. And uh, let me do my outro now. 
See if I remember how to do this. Remember to be kind to one another. Show kindness, not hate. Love one another. Smile no matter what. Even if you pinch your sciatic nerve and have, you know, degenerative disc disease and you're in a lot of pain, keep smiling. Um, and uh, no matter what's going on in your life, keep smiling. Uh, and as always, peace. What yeah. <laughs> so, so Frank, why don't you just kind of go over with Liz what, what you're going to be doing today for yeah. the second appointment? Yeah. I was just explaining to Liz that um, when it comes to making dentures and, and digital dentures, there's a, a multitude of workflows that we can consider. And a lot of uh, it depends on what the patient presents with and what you're trying to accomplish as far as which workflow that you're, you're going to be choosing. Now, Liz presents with a... Um, an upper denture in particular that I somewhat like the positioning of the teeth. Okay. So it would be nice to learn from that and to capture that information into the digital process, uh, which could be done by scanning the denture and, and actually physically having that into the computer so that when we put our new teeth in, we can kind of match it up similar to where the, the other teeth are. And that's kind of nice for patients in particular who are really like what they have, they mm -hmm. just want the dentures to fit. Yes. And um, so, so, so that's a, one of the workflows where we can actually use your existing dentures and uh, take impressions inside them and a bike registration mm -hmm. and scan that and then enter that information into the computer to start our design process. So that's a workflow. So you can, you yeah. can kind of combine those two impressions, one without the dentures in and one with the dentures in, exactly. to create the perfect sort of mm -hmm. product. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah no, that's, that's very true. Because what we'll do is we'll scan the, uh, the impression surface of the dentures and the dentures themselves. And the, through the miracle of this technology, uh, you, we could uh, ghost in your denture into wow. the process so that when we're in a, in a part of the uh, process where we're designing where to place the teeth and things, um, we're able to bring the patient's original denture in into play so that we can kind of learn from it. Now, in your case, we kind of like where they are. In another case, maybe um, I look at your denture and I want you the teeth are too long. I want them to be a little bit shorter. That's okay, too, because yeah. we have that information. And now when I set the teeth, design the teeth, I'll set them a little shorter. To where your teeth are, or a little more forward, or whatever it might be. Again, you're using your original denture as a, as a guide. <clears throat> so it's a, really kind of a magical process how we could do that. Right. Um, that comes into play as well if you're if this was your natural teeth that you had and you're going to have your, all your teeth extracted. Mm -hmm. We could do the same thing oh. by taking scans of your natural teeth before they're extracted, taking you know doing our impressions and things. And then we can always ghost in your natural teeth to help us in the guiding of setting the teeth. Things, this is using the technology to advance dentistry. It, it, you know, some people look at the digital denture process as just a different way of making a denture. Well, it goes way beyond that it, it, in, in the way it captures information and allows us to do really better dentistry and more appropriate dentistry for what the patient's interests might be in things. So. Uh, so that was, that was one for workflow. Now, all that being said, we chose to do a different workflow last time, uh, yes. and uh, just to compare the two and give you two experiences. Yeah. And uh, that's what we're going to do today: is to um, look at our second appointment of this particular workflow that we did here. And what we did here is we uh, took impressions originally, <coughs> last appointment, and from those impressions, we um, uh, took took a a preliminary bite registration as well and we scanned all that information and we're able to design dentures now they look a little funny <laughs> because they're made out of a um, a different material uh, and this is a, um, a disc of uh, a tr we call it a try-in material okay. and so it's not a actual denture material but it's just uh, it's less expensive because we're only going to use it as a try-in so it's not for the final prosthesis. <clears throat> but it's accurate enough, or certainly it's accurate, it's extremely accurate, uh, and, uh, but it's not as aesthetic as your, your final denture teeth. But, but it does allow us to um, uh, design our teeth. Uh, the pink that I put on here is a little 
uh, temporary material that I uh, just attached here to give a little contrast between the white and the pink part of the denture. So if we try this in, uh, we'll be able to uh, visualize I'll be able to uh, distinguish better. the teeth exactly. from the gum. And we can make choices. Now this is yes. only a preliminary, so kind of the first guess of yes. uh, where, to, where to put the teeth with this particular workflow. Mm -hmm. uh, that with this, this original workflow that we're doing here, um, there's more a little more guesswork okay. involved um, because we don't have your actual denture scanned into the process. The second workflow that we're going to start here, uh, when we take impressions in your denture, we'll actually have your denture right. into the okay. process. So there'll be a little, little different to the design um, when we get into that process. We'll end up with the same uh, try-in denture, yeah. but done a little differently on the, uh, on the workflow process. Okay, and that made out of your tooth material, so there's kind of a shockingly white tooth right. in, in a regard, and they're unnatural looking. But uh, what I'm more looking at the um, position of the teeth and how, how they look when you smile with them as far as the relationship of the teeth to um, your lips and your face in general. Um, looking at how you're talking, and plus I'm ultimately checking the bite registration as well. So first glance, um, let's take a look, open up just a little, and in the resting position you have a, a nice tooth display, also looking at the uh, mold that we selected for you, as far as the size of the teeth mm -hmm. things, and you might have some opinions on that. I'm not going to say too much because I want you to look at it, you know, I want you to reflect my opinion, I want you to reflect your opinion. Right. <clears throat> As I said from the get-go, it's more important that I hear from you, mm -hmm. you know, everything that you feel and see. Uh, and it's a little tricky on the try because it's not representative as your right. final venture for sure, but uh, but close enough for I think you understanding that you could give me some good feedback. So. Okay. Now count one to ten again. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Come faster now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Open up a little. Just relax your jaw. Close real slow. Now, uh, the bite registration that we took initially was what we referred to as a preliminary bite, mm -hmm. um, but gosh, it's, it's quite good. Your teeth come together very, very, very nicely. I'm very happy with that. Okay, so at this point, I don't want to say too much more. I want you to have a chance to take a look at it. Right. Um, plus, I do want to take a look at you standing up, okay. and we'll take another look, and then I'm going to let you go to the Maybe the ladies' room, because it's got a bigger mirror. Okay. Yeah, give you a chance to kind of, in your own time, to take a look at things okay. and get, get get some opinions. Okay. 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 I'll have you stand up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know what we'll do too is uh, get some photographs. I like to see them. Yeah. I like to study a photograph okay. uh, because it helps me to look at it on a screen as opposed gotcha. to just doing it directly. Always and with the technology again why not use it right you, know, you right. take a picture you can throw it on the computer you can pull it up and, and study it a little bit so they'll, they'll get some help to me <clears throat> so we're going to have um uh, i don't like this what do you see the sticking out mm -hmm. farther okay i like i see the bite is really good mm -hmm. my midline is, seems nice mm -hmm. a lot better than the other one yep Explain what you see on this side. I see this protruding, that tooth sort of sticking out more. Okay. And the I back feel tooth, like, the back tooth. yeah, I feel like this should come out more than that. If that makes any sense, doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. Or yeah, this coming out. So it's going to um, Smile. I guess maybe right. this. 
Maybe this coming out a little. Like okay. I feel like it's narrow. But there's what, you, what catches your eyes is the transition between yeah. the, these two teeth. Does yeah. it uh, strike your right? Okay. Right on both sides. Give yourself a big smile. And stare at that for a sec. I like them. But I'm trying to figure out there's something I don't like, but I can't figure it out. Okay, take your time. This way, maybe a larger mirror might be better for you as well. Maybe if the front teeth. Say again? Maybe the, I think because the front teeth are a little bit different mm -hmm. than the ones I have now. It's kind of catching my eye like rabbit teeth. If that makes any sense? Yeah, yours are more rounded. Mine are more rounded. Yeah, it's definitely. If these, let me hide these. I would like it much better if. Yeah, if those weren't protruding. Mm -hmm. If these are a little bit more like my other ones. So, when you say rabbit teeth, that's an interesting expression. You mean that the teeth are inclined? Yes, I'd ra I want them to stick out more, I guess. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. I don't, because I've never had teeth that went inward, so I want them to sort of come more outward. More, na It'd be more natural, more like my old teeth before I had them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because one of the things we ran into is the... Um, your jaw relationship yeah. is is classified more as what we call a class two, meaning your lower jaw is a little smaller than your upper jaw yep. compared to the average individual. So one of the ways we compensate for that is just as, that's just what an interest you use that word. We wrap at the upper teeth just so so that the gap isn't so great. Right. Because if I bring out your, your upper teeth in a more normal pitch, then there's going to be more of a gap. I like the gap. Interesting. Is that bad? No. Okay. No, but that's a that's a that's a that's a great conversation to have. Okay. Because that that is the consequence of uh, if you want to call it a consequence <clears throat> by having a, a more distance between your upper and lower teeth. And and I like that because my teeth naturally had that that okay. little gap there. Okay. So I, I think that's, that's what it's missing. That's an easy fix. Okay, and yeah. then the side teeth, it is kind of like the transition. I think it's sort of like. Too noticeable. Okay. I'm trying not to hurt your feelings. Look, it's not my feelings. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. This, 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 is what we have, this is what we have to try and. I, okay. have, I have certain uh, ideas as well, things that I see. What do you but, see? Well, I don't want to bring that into the conversation because I want to hear your, you know, okay. your purest ones first. Okay. And uh, so that's uh, that's very helpful. Okay. So very very helpful to have it. And that's again, the whole purpose of the try in is because this is a guess. You know yes. where we're putting the teeth. It's yes. uh, it's a guess based on it's an educated guess, but it's a, still a guess in the sense. You did of, a great um, job. Just just trying to figure out at least the proximity where we want to have them, and then we have something. Uh, it's a now it's a conversation piece that we have. You know, hold the conversation. So what I do want you to do though is go go into the um, uh, ladies' room. Okay. And with a larger mirror. Okay. Take your time a little bit there, so nobody's around you or whatever. You get kind of. Okay. Take a couple of minutes to stare at it a little bit more. Okay. okay? And we'll okay. have another conversation. Good. All right, guys. So right now I am at Ivoclar Vivident. I can't figure out where my lens is. Well, there it is. And I have um, what's called a Pramil... Pramil I can't say the word. It's basically a try-in um, with the digital denture, and it's done differently, so it looks really weird. But... What I'm looking at, they had me come into the bathroom to study my teeth more, to see what I do and don't like. It seems to be more like rabbit teeth, so I don't like that, and I don't like these teeth jutting out here. Now, these aren't what my real teeth are going to look like. This is a mold um, based on what my teeth may look like. They're obviously going to add more um, contrast between the gums and the teeth are not going to be this way don't worry um but i think i want them to come forward more in the front i don't want the sides to be so drastic so maybe have the teeth come out more if that makes sense i think the lowers are fine the bite registration is great and they're really comfortable for a try-in. They're not out of wax. They're out of 
a different material, which Dr. Frank discussed. I don't know if it's going to be the same video as this one or a different video, but it'll be, you'll know what I'm talking about when you're watching this. Um, but yeah, I think I'll tell Dr. Frank I want them to pop out more, maybe make these front teeth a little bit, I don't know, more wider, spaced out a little bit more, and then come forward. So that's what I think of so far of my um, try-in. So we'll go from there and I'll keep you guys posted. All right, peace. So let's see the difference. Okay. Because that, that would be interesting for me to see. Okay. Instead of the guessing, they <laughs> actually have the, uh, the matrix of the other teeth. So that'll okay. be an interesting uh, um, sidelight for, for us as well. So I do agree, I see a transition, a little rough transition between the uh -huh. front teeth and the back teeth, I understand that. Um, <clears throat> as far as the size of the teeth, let's take a look and see if okay. that's an, an issue or not, we'll compare it to what you're used to. Okay. Because that's, that's a, that's a eyes on the, in the beholder. You know, okay, as, I'm sorry. Know, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, but it's important that, and it's good that you have an eye to where you want to be. Okay. And uh, so we'll make that comparison and see how it looks because, you know, these are different materials too. It may throw you a little bit. Let's let's, right. let's actually make a physical comparison. Okay. I like to do that too. And um, I'm also looking at the the plane of your butt. I might just elevate the plane. In fact, I would like to get a box plane. I want to mm -hmm. just double check it with the box plane. What is a fox plane? I'll show you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because one of the things um, we want to make sure that your teeth are parallel to your eyes. Right. And uh, so this this will give us a, a better comparison. It's kind of an uh, amplification. I could kind of eyeball it a little right. bit, but uh, when I put this against your teeth, <clears throat> it's a little device that I could kind of look at your eyes a little bit better. In fact, we'll get a, we'll get a photograph of that as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, this is going to rest on your teeth, mm -hmm. and this will project outward, so then you can kind of line up this to your eyes, to see oh. how your teeth balance, balance to your eyes. Wasn't that nifty? Isn't that cool? Yeah. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Do, you, do, you, do you feel like you talk with a lisp at all? You yes. Have, you hear that from I have a lisp, I think. Okay, what we're going to do is compare this physically now, you know, to one another yes. to give you a little better idea on. Um, um, Apples to apples, as okay. far as you know, things you're looking at. <clears throat> yeah, the, the thing that's striking to me is the inclination. These have a significantly more forward inclination. And I like that. Okay, and that's. I'm sorry. If you don't. No, no. At, at first glance, I um, I don't want to interject too much from my side, but these look to me a little splayed, right. a little too far forward. So maybe there's a happy. There's a happy medium. Medium between yes. the two. And um, you know, so I think I think that's what I'm going to strive for. Okay. Somewhere it's just a little bit in between. Okay. Because I, I do think those are a little far too much forward. forward I'm just used inclined. to them. Sure. Right. And not that it's bad, but right. I just say it depends a little better. They, I will say they do fall more forward than my <clears throat> natural teeth did, mm -hmm. but they're closer with that little bit of inclination. Yeah, they're nice. Have been neat to have your natural teeth. Yes, you know, that would have been really nice, but. but because that does look, you know, tad forward. 
All right, let me uh, just take the, try to match them this way, give you an idea. And see how this, this tooth sticks out more than that tooth. I like how that sticks out more so than that one does. Okay. I like that they're the, like fangs. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's more the, that's just, just what we were dis discussing is the inclination. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so it would change all those inclinations, kind of spread them out a little bit. All right. So they look a little more well, somewhere in between. But now take a look at the size of the teeth. Now, it's a little rough because those are kind of roughly they're, they're little closer teeth, but they are close. Than I yeah. I, they huh. seem to be like almost right the same on. size, yeah. So I don't think size is going to be. I think it is the inclination that mm -hmm. I'm looking at, and it'll change everything mm -hmm. yeah I do too now the actual arch form mm -hmm. is pretty close in other words if I match up your back teeth to your back teeth the actual arch is pretty close so I don't know if you were did you have a feeling that these were like too narrow um, not, oh, that would maybe not really, interpreting. they felt more um, <clears throat> snug, like they fit very well. Mm -hmm. What felt skinny? You said the word skinny. What did that mean? Oh, what I meant was when I smiled, I thought maybe the teeth looked skinny, but like thinner than these ones. But now looking at them side by side, I see that they're actually pretty mm -hmm. much the same size. Mm -hmm. So I think it is just the fact that they are more the, inward. The inclination. Yes. Is really the, 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 that's really the only difference I see pretty much is that inclination. Yes, now that I see them side by side, that is pretty much the only difference I see as well. Now, what changed here is the lower teeth. And these are set way, way off the ridge. Okay. And it was done to compensate for the fact that your lower ridge is smaller than right. your upper ridge. <clears throat> so, so these teeth were set, you know, way far forward, um, which that's kinda, why I look like I have a underbite. Um, would you say? Yes. Well, when you say underbite, I'm not sure what you mean. I mean, like it, when I close my teeth with these dentures in, it looks like they come even more. These are forward. too forward. Yes. Yeah, they are. Okay. Yeah, and they're they're physically set way way off the ridge, uh, and. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but you can see these are brought back in. Yes. Uh, and so when I brought them back in physically, I also tipped them a little bit. Uh, again, just so that they have a reasonable approximation to the upper teeth. Right. <clears throat> so I think with the changes we're going to make, I am going to develop a little bit of a gap between your upper and lower teeth, okay. as we discussed. I'll like try to that. keep it minimal because okay. I don't want it too big of a gap because if it's too big of a gap, then you'll get the list back. Because oh. the, the air escapes, and yes. you can't get a good speech yeah. sounds. Okay. So, uh, but we're trying to do it. The aesthetic thing is to try to get the inclination out a little further, and uh, but not that far. Okay. And uh, and keep your lower teeth <clears throat> anatomically a little more where they sh should be. Right. And uh, and keep them a little closer to the ridge, like like they are. Uh, I noticed that this is actually sorry to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. The bottom one. Is actually a lot better. Can't catch that. Sure. No, okay. sure <laughs> um, you own these. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> it looks like these are more. One side is longer than the other. Uh, yeah, we're not we're not done with the impression of the lower, so I can't compare this to that as far as shape goes. Because okay. I'm, I'm going to re-impression this today. Okay. So then we're going to get a final impression from this. It'll be a little different. Um, I did want to show you this though. When I put this on this gauge here, mm -hmm. there's a little depression in the front of your mouth there that this falls right into pretty, pretty accurately. And it shows how long your teeth are. Okay. And so here we're about about seven millimeters. That's five, the big one, and then so it's mm -hmm. about seven millimeters long from that center of that we call a papilla to the incisal edge. Now I can make a direct comparison to this and pretty close. So the length of the teeth are almost identical. Oh wow, okay. that's great. Now the big difference is this though. 
the head in the center. When we look at the position on this scale here, mm -hmm. it measures around seven millimeters for the tri indenture. And when we put this in, it's at least eight. So it's at least a millimeter. Yeah, that's a big difference. Forward. And cheap it is. Yes. And uh, so so that's where we're going to make that, that correction. Um, and I think that'll be the, you know, I think you identified, you know, um, uh, things that were changed very, very astutely, if I did. Oh, I think you know, so. They'll use the word rabbit. I haven't heard that. I mean, that's what the term that I use, but I've never heard anybody else use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on the same so, wavelength, wow, then, Dr. Wow, wow, that's impressive. <laughs> that's really kind of neat that you said that. Um, okay, so what I want to do is go forward and start the impression process for the first uh, workflow, and then we'll jump into the second workflow. Okay. Our upper ten. Um, um, I'm sorry, Frank, what are you going to do here? Well, okay, it's a direct to try in, but I'm going to do an impression in the upper denture. Because there's a little glitch with the revision process, so this just eliminates the, uh, the glitch by uh, putting a, a quick wash into the upper. So I'm going to start there, then I'm going to concentrate on impressioning the lower. So you're utilizing her tri indenture to do a wash impression? Right. Okay. And this fits great. So it's not so much for the fit, it's really for the scan. Just to capture more detail? Uh, it will do that, but uh, not that we had to, because we didn't. But, it would, but uh, so when this is scanned, it gives us a better um, uh, opportunity to, to, to get accuracy into the uh, scanning process. Okay. Otherwise, we have to scan this without that question. Dr. Frank CJ is available now. Yeah. 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 Just a wash impression of the <clears throat> upper denture. As you can see, it's thin, which fine. We don't need any uh, uh, more detail because, we, as I said, it's more just the one that says scanned. <clears throat> it scans so much better than trying to scan the uh, uh, try in material. Let me see. Now you're going to. So you're now going to do an impression in her existing denture. And what are you doing here, Frank? Okay, now this is the uh, uh, impression in using the patient's uh, current dentures as the impression tray. And the reason we're gonna do this is so that we can capture her um, uh, position of her teeth in the scan. And uh, so this is a complete different workflow option um, using the, as I said, using the dentures as the impression trays and, and the bite uh, registration uh, instrument. And we can do that because we, we like the position of the teeth and we want to kind of capture that into the um, uh, design of the digital denture.
she has between the uh, upper teeth and the lower teeth <clears throat> and probably the, the cause of that uh, lisping sound. As you can see, it's pretty hard for her, if not impossible, to, to really approximate her teeth into a, a tight enough position to make good sibilant sounds, S sounds. <clears throat> so instead of saying S, she says Sh, because the teeth have a little more space between them. Open up. That's the impression. Okay. Put a. I'm sorry. Can you can you start over on that? Yeah, the lower the lower denture you already put a soft liner in. <clears throat> That's co soft, so we have kind of a functional start of a good functional impression, and we're going to just simply wash this. We'll dry it up real good. We'll just take a wash impression, and that should give us a uh, an uh, adequate impression for her. So now we're going to take a light body wash impression right over the cold comfort reline. And again, this is just to uh, give us a little better surface. The cold comfort is, or cold soft rather, it's quite accurate, but it leaves kind of a rough surface, so this will give a uh, more finished surface. And just relax your jaw, close down again. That's it. That just stay just like that. Stick your tongue out of the other one. That's good. Close down again. Good. Stay closed. going to rehearse with you for one second. What I want you to do is, to, and you do it so well, uh, just relax your jaw and close. Perfect. That's all you got to do. Now we're going to put the white registration material in there first. Open up. You're unbelievable. <laughs> Chris, I'm going to have you retrieve this for me too. Frank, I don't know if you can tell me what you're doing here. While okay, doing this is the uh, CAD bite registration material. We're simply going to get a, a relationship, a bite relationship with our existing dentures. Just relax your jaw. Close down real slow, real slow, a little more, a little more. And then just hold that, perfect. So what we've accomplished here in a relatively short period of time as uh, in impressions using the uh, existing dentures as a uh, impression trays and uh, we achieved a bite relationship. <clears throat> this is um, uh, the virtual CAD bite registration material. I like it because uh, it has a very high shore hardness so that after it's set it has a very um, very minimal resiliency so a nice uh, stiff uh, record. And it sets up rather quickly.
to open it. It's going to be a little tricky. But I take this all out in one piece. Like good. So here's our impressions and bite relationship. Then we're going to bring this over and have it all scanned. Frank, you're just prepping this to scan, is that right? Yeah, uh, that's just dis dis disinfection. And uh, what CJ will do, he'll, he'll put a spray on here. <clears throat> and I'll spray the, uh, the denture surface of the lower, denture surface of the upper, and then the facial surface so I can pin them all together. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then that's really the, the uh, impressions in the denture workflow sequence. Uh, things I would have done a little differently because we're kind of, kind of speeding it up a little bit. Um, you may want to have done a little border molding you know, maybe the couple of areas that could have uh, you know, improved it slightly. Uh, we could have put an adhesive on the denture basis to maintain the um, impression material a little uh, more um, stabilized on the ridge, although there's, there's not a lot of um, uh, movement in the scanning process, uh, so we don't, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a little care really is not much of, a, not much of an issue. <clears throat> and then with the adhesive, it's a lot of cleanup process, so we try to avoid that to kind of expedite it a little bit. But I think we're going to be in good shape. Tasking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Frank, what are you doing now? All right. This is a um, this is CoSoft, a tissue conditioning material that we like to use for as a uh, nice a, a functional impression, at least for the base, because <clears throat> it has a little lot longer working time than impression materials. Uh, it does set up, it does have a setting time, but, it, uh, but a nice long working time so we can get a nice physiological um, uh, border mold. And it kind of supplements the uh, other more typical border molding procedures like compound or um, heavy body materials. And you typically do this just for the lower, is that correct? Yeah, I think the, the lower's got the physiology of importance. The uh, <clears throat> the upper is really kind of a static impression where the lower impression is really much much more dynamic. So we, quite simply put, there's a, the tongue is, has its influence on the lower, and very obviously not as much influence on the upper. So we're just going to put a nice, generous application. And we're going to let our patient work with this for about five, at least five minutes. Wonderful material, a little challenging to work with because it's kind of sticky and gooey. But it does have some magical property to it. Okay, here's a sticky gooey one. Now just relax, close down. Then you can kind of look at this other denture and you see the difference in the anterior gap of her uh, teeth compared yeah, to the, yeah, the other. Over, yeah, over jet is much less. Now we're going to change it a little bit, make it a little more, because we are going to change the inclination of the teeth slightly. But not, not to the extent of where the other ones were. Okay, open up. Stick your tongue out. Relax. Close down. 